Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome yet again to another edition of What Really Matters NYC with your host, Tony Keevan, and more importantly, you. You can dial in right here. It's a live show, 212-757-1541. But for the first part of our show, we've got a guest. And um, for those of you who don't know, we focus on Manhattan News. And of course, we've had a, a lot going on in New York City in the last um, three weeks or so with Sandy, etc. And I thought we'd reach out to someone about the different zones and the value of real estate in Manhattan, because that was a story, or New York City in general, because that was a story that sort of, forgive the pun, floated around uh, in the last week or so concerning the different zones that we have in New York City. There's Zone A and there's Zone B for different floods, the impacts, etc. And as nature takes its course more and more on our environment, and we learn that we can't really control it, all sorts of people are doing all sorts of things. So I'd like to first welcome our guest, who is Dean Rosemary Scanlon. Dean, are you there? I am certainly here, Tony. Great. And Dean, uh, Dean Scanlon is the dean of the NYU Shack Institute of Real Estate, and they are a fantastic organization. They've got a, um, uh, they offer students a competitive advantage in the real estate, real estate development, and construction industries through three graduate degree programs, an MS in real estate, MS in real estate development, and MS in construction management. I have an MS from uh, NYU in interactive telecommunications, so I know it's a great program and we're really uh, lucky to have um, Dean Scanlon here. And the, the reason we wanted to, to ask you a couple questions, we won't keep you long, but um, it's always on our mind, you know, real estate values in New York, and we seem to have managed better than most cities through the, um, the, 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 the recession that we suffered. And we came up in the news because I think it was last Wednesday your group held a conference and a, a gentleman, the CEO of Cantor Fitzgerald, of course, who everyone knows very famously from 9-11, they suffered so much. But um, he was at the conference and he said, I'll quote him, I think there's been a value erosion downtown, Howard Lutnick, chairman and CEO of Cantor Fitzgerald, said during the New York University Shack Institute of Real Estate Capital Markets and Real Estate Conference. Quote, it had just started to come back. The concept now of fear of flooding is going to affect values. And I'm very lucky. I live up in Harlem and we're in the, I guess, Zone C. So we just thought we'd ask um, Dean Scanlon because as well today, I'll, I'll, sh I'll be quiet in just a second. Um, you know, uh, Council uh, Speaker Christine Quinn uh, yesterday offered all these new ways to protect the city with storm walls and retractable flood walls and power and ways to open balloons in the subway entrances so the water doesn't flood down there. So I thought we'd just ask Dean a little bit about the real estate values and the impact overall and, to, and anything else you'd like to say, Dean. That's all. I'll turn it over to you with a question. Has our value gone down in Zone A, I guess? Well, I think it's much too early to tell. I mean, clearly there's Zone A parts of it. A good part of it is still in the recovery mode, right? But we had, and, and there's a lot of recovery. There's some buildings along Walter, Water Street, the great big office buildings that aren't open yet. And, and they may not be open for another month or two. It wasn't just the flooding in the basements. It was contaminated water that came in and it damaged the electrical systems uh, and, and so forth. But, but I don't see this issue for lower Manhattan much different than uh, on the short-term analysis than, than what happened after 9-11. The big fear was everybody would move away from all of New York, not just downtown, but, you know, all the people would leave. They would... They would, companies would leave, residents would leave, and it didn't happen at all. The opposite happened. And, but, but the rebuilding, now I know what Mr. Lutnick was getting at, the rebuilding of downtown Manhattan after the 9-11 attacks has been a decade-long process and is not quite finished yet. So much work had to be done also to the, to the wiring and infrastructure under the streets throughout, new piping and, and water, you know, water pipes and everything throughout. Uh, this one... Has a, this one does have a different longer-term impact, and Christine Quinn is right on this, in that we, we, may, we really have to set in motion now some, uh, some new ways to protect against large storm surges. But that may not necessarily have a deleterious effect on real estate values or property values five to even 10 or 15 years from now. It really depends on what we do as a city to try and, and recover and rebuild, uh, but also to start planning for the future. Because um, I guess the question that comes to mind was not necessarily this, this hurricane that, that came up, this nor uh, that, that came and turned left on us, which was right. irregular, but I, I remember that the, the Office of Emergency Action in New York City, that the, the real plan for buttressing our subways, et cetera, was because this 
sh uh, this um, cliff is going to fall off over by Africa or Europe in the, in the ocean. It's going to cause a kind of a tsunami. It was in the news during the tsunami time. And right. although we didn't suffer as much as the tsunami, the big tsunami that happened at Christmas many, many years ago, um, are, are we... Are we, though, I, I, I hear your story that kind of in the short term, medium term, I guess the value won't change, but... Um, but longer term, I agree, longer term we have an issue. And, and, and it's, it's, this is not a new issue even, for, you know, to be considered by the city. Because Mayor Bloomberg, when he came up with his innovative plan, New York 2030, which I think came out about five years ago, had one of its chapters the change in climate and what this may mean, and we could already measure an increase in the amount of water level, sea level, if you will, in the New York Harbor, and with fairly good forecast, with a you know, range of scenarios over what might happen, say, through to 2050. And as a, a follow-up to that, Mayor Bloomberg got very, uh, appointed two or three task forces to go into much more detail planning of, of what what measures we would have to do. The problem was it didn't happen in 2020 or 2030 or 2050. It happened in 2012. Sure. Right? So it, so the danger of a storm surge and the alignment with a full moon in this case uh, and was, you know, more of a severe problem than just the winds alone. Uh, but, but it has happened now, and it's, you know, it's jolted us all into thinking, how do we protect our buildings? Right. What has to change in the building codes? It's the, the generators are no help if they're in the basement, right? Or even if you get the generators up a little higher on the floor and the fuel tanks are in the basement, which is what the city code calls for and the fire code, we, we have to rethink that. We have to rethink how we protect electrical panels and circuit breakers for uh, telecommunications as well. Uh, so the things can be done within the buildings themselves. So that's one one measure, and then probably the bigger or longer term measures is you know how can you build floodgates or or seawalls or longer term. The, the, some of the most haunting images from the Japanese tsunami, uh, from you know the great earthquake there last year, was you looked at the at the film and you could see the, the very large seawalls that were built. Some of them were 15 feet high, maybe some of them were 20 feet high, and built that way to protect the fishing villages in the coastal area uh, that they knew had happened from you know, tsunamis 50 or 100 years ago. And yet when this great tsunami came in, it was 30 plus feet high. So, so, so uh, something as catastrophic as a tsunami can take you know, can override everything you're planning for. But, 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 but clearly, you know, the, when you look at the vibrant economies in the, in the United States or around the world, they're all coastal cities, big coastal cities. Sure, Miami, right. uh, San Francisco, right. London has the same Los issue. Angeles. London, 30 or so years ago, built the Thames Barrier, you know, downriver from London to, to try and help with the great tidal surges that sometimes came, came in. London is as threatened uh, as any other city. So, you know, so these are big issues. And it, it no, but the whole debate over climate change no longer is a theoretical or a political yeah. debate. You know, it, th these are issues now we have to clearly plan for long for the long term, or maybe not so long term. I'm really sorry. Something's happened to my camera here. I'm going to take me off the screen for a minute because it's a little disorienting. I wanted to ask you a question, though. In the future, are we going to see, like, a Venice downtown in the middle of Manhattan? Well, we would hope not. Uh, you know, Venice is way ahead of us in dealing with this, and I think they had several feet of water in St. Mark's Plaza at the beginning of this week. Um, and, uh, you know, we would hope not, but I think that the... But the evidence is now in that, that hurricanes, storms, even our nor'easter storms are more severe now than, than we basically had and more frequent uh, in our historical records. So, so now we have to face up for, to it. What do we do? Okay. Well, Dean, I'm going to let you go because I really appreciate your, your commentary there, but we've had a little problem with the camera. And I really don't want to kind of hold you here much longer. I've got a couple more questions um, just for one second. Um, 
If I'm going to, if I'm considering, if I own a, a, a property like a, uh, uh, am I, if I'm a homeowner down in Tribeca, and you know I suffered through 9/11, and now I've suffered through this. What, what, why should I stay? Why shouldn't I move up uh, higher into on the Upper West Side or into Harlem? Well, I suppose in the end, that's always people's decisions. But again, I'm going back to the post 9/11, and that didn't stop the you know the intense development still in the Chelsea area or in Tribeca or in the Lower East Side, where we're, or downtown around Ball Street, where we've had a big increase in residential uh, units. So uh, I, I think, you, you know, I think there are a number of different types of issues that have to be dealt with. If you're, if you're an art gallery in Chelsea, you've got to think about how you, you store and display your art in a way that you didn't have to a month ago. Sure. If, if the issues on the power supply are a different issue, right? It, if, how do you protect those massive circuits or substations, right? It's a terrible inconvenience to be without power for an hour, much less a week, right? Yes, absolutely. Right? We, we run on power. But, we, but, but NYU was able to get, keep its undergraduates fed because we had the cogeneration plant, you know, right, right down in, around the square. So that kept several key buildings with, with food supply, for, you know, food services going. So, you know, there, there are different items that, are, that, that do not, you know, get so involved as building a seawall uh, that, that can be done and that we're, we're, you know, we're such an inventive city and, and a resolute city that everybody will get busy working on. Got it. Well, Dean, listen, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, I apologize. I had a little camera um, problem tonight, but we caught your audio. It was great talking to you. And I'm going to let you go so I can focus a little bit more on fixing these cameras. But thank you very much for your insight. And what I hear you saying is that it's not going to go down in the short run no. or, or necessarily in the medium term, but in the long term, we've got to be sure that we implement some of these solutions and we're just going to adapt to it. I mean, I, I, I can't see that we're going to wind up like New Orleans, though, where we're like at the edge where, you know, they, they, it seems like it costs so much to have to adapt each time, right? Well, well, it certainly did cost an enormous amount, and New, but New York is of a, di a different order of magnitude, right? We've got eight and a half million people, and they started out with a little about five hundred thousand, and and haven't built back. But I think I think one of the things that's so true. I mean, not to downplay what the people of New Orleans had to do, but this is a resolute city. The kind of people, the people who make decisions, are not going to walk away from their investments in okay. real estate or in big institutions or even an expensive apartment in Tribeca, everybody's going to figure out, okay, now what do I do to make it better or protect it or, or okay, how, do, you know, how can I assure a power supply that's not going to go out for a week? It'll, it'll be an interesting time for us. Here we go again. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Great John, time. Well, it's Dean, thanks city. so much for your time. I'm going to let you go, and I really appreciate you giving us the tips here. And um, so it's not too much to worry about. We just need to get our act together for the future. So I suppose we all should um, back uh, Council Speaker Quinn's ideas and uh, work with the Bloomberg administration with innovative ways to, uh, to um, secure our future, because we are the greatest city in the world, and I guess we're going to remain that way, right? Well, I think so. And interestingly, that's how our major speakers at the Capital Markets Conference wound up. You know, they, they were sobered by, serious about what had happened. But in the end, you know, resolute, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll work our way and build our way out of this. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your call, okay? We appreciate it very much. My pleasure, Tony. Take care, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And ladies and gentlemen, our guest goes and we get the camera fixed. I, I promised to the gods of him and then I was sitting here and it went click by itself and it just did its thing. But um, thank you so much for helping me out, okay? Appreciate it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we had this great interview, but we're going to have to turn it into an audio clip because we had no video, unless most people like it with me not on the screen anyway, which potentially could be the case.